here we go. So y'all should have that little half sheet that you guys got from me. Um, and if y'all follow along, then um, we'll, get, we'll be good to go. This will be kind of a, almost like a flipped classroom type of thing. But uh, let's get started. So it says um, enzymes, the first thing to know about an enzyme is that it's a type of protein. So enzymes are, are you know, we've been talking about by the biomolecules, carbohydrates, proteins, lipids, and nucleic acids. Um, enzymes are in the protein category. So they're a very uh, specific type of protein. And, you know, their main job is to help control the rate of the chemical reactions that go on inside living things. So starting out, you know, we talk about a chemical reaction like maybe digestion or, you know, chemical signals being sent around the body, things like that. Uh, they, they need a catalyst. So think of a catalyst as just a like a, uh, I always say, you know, a catalyst is kind of like your coach. You know, your coach encourages you and gets you going. You know, you're running a mile and that last lap's really hard, but your coach is, come on, you can do it, let's go. And all of a sudden you have a little extra energy and boom, you get to go. So a catalyst is kind of like that for chemical reactions. It, it speeds up the rate of the chemical reaction. And the way it speeds up, as you can see on this graph here, the way that it speeds up the chemical reaction is by lowering what's called the activation energy. Okay, So a catalyst uh, lowers the activation energy. So all reactions, basically, they need a certain amount of, of energy to get started and what a catalyst does and what an enzyme does is it lowers the amount of energy needed to get that reaction started. So think of it like this. Let's say there was a giant boulder and you had to push that boulder up a hill. Okay? Well, by yourself, that would be that would take a lot of energy. You it would be really really hard to do. But if you added 20 friends, okay? Then everybody sharing that amount of energy so that it's going to take a lot less energy to get that boulder up the hill okay um, so you know a, an enzyme lowers the amount of energy needed to get a reaction going all right and you can fill in your blanks there um, so it says you know without an enzyme it takes a lot more energy for the reaction to occur so that's kind of what I just said if you're by yourself pushing that boulder up it's going to be really really hard if you have a bunch of people with you, it's less energy for each person to do the same work. Okay. Another, I like this little graphic here. Here's your little goofy enzyme alien pushing up a little satellite thing, and there's a dude lowering the hill. So you know he's he's making it easier. The enzymes make reactions easier. Here's a great graph. Your test has lots of graphs with enzymes, so you can see here's the amount of energy needed. Okay. Without an enzyme, the energy is needed is a lot higher. With an enzyme, the energy needed is a lot lower. So if it's lower energy needed for a reaction to occur, in turn, just like it says here, by lowering the activation energy, you speed up the reaction. Again, back to the boulder. If you were pushing that boulder by yourself, you might be able to do it, but it would take a long time and a lot of energy. If you had a bunch of friends helping you, it would be less energy, and in turn, it would go faster. Okay. So enzymes are proteins. Again, they act as biological catalysts, so kind of living catalysts, catalysts for living things. Cells use enzymes to speed up chemical reactions. Okay. Enzymes speed up reactions by lowering the activation energy. This is all stuff we've kind of started with. Um, now, this is important because a particular enzyme catalyzes, catalyzes only one reaction. There are thousands of different enzymes in a cell catalyzing thousands of different chemical reactions. So, in other words, enzymes are specific to the reaction they work on. Okay, And we'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute. So, watch. Here's what I'm talking about. So, you see the enzyme has what's called a... Um, a uh, active site okay let me go back okay so they provide so they provide a site for what's called the substrate okay to go sorry screwing up a little bit there you go so 
the enzyme is called the enzyme. What the enzyme, you look at this graphic here, what the enzyme works on or acts on is called the substrate. So there it is before, boom, enzyme works on it, and now it's called the product. So the site where the substrate binds to is called the active site. And this is, I think, a little better graphic, okay? So here's the active site. So here's the enzyme. It's specific to these substrates, all right? So they go in like puzzle pieces. The enzyme acts on them, and when the enzyme and the substrate are together, we call that the enzyme-substrate complex, and then the enzyme releases what are called the products. So it's just like a chemical reaction. You have the, um, uh, you know, the reactants that go into the reaction. Well, with this, it's called a substrate. So the substrate are the reactants. They go into the enzyme. The enzyme does its job and then releases the products, okay? But if there's a test question, you know, where does the substrate bind to? It's the active site, okay? The other thing to know about enzymes is they, that they are used over and over again. So what I always like to explain is, think of enzymes like your house key, okay? So your house key, you can use it over and over again, and it's specific to your house lock. You can't go to your neighbor's house and unlock their door, okay? So just like enzymes are specific to their reactions, your house key is specific to the lock it will work on. So that's why there's thousands of different enzymes, and in your neighborhood, that's why there's thousands of different keys. So one key opens one lock, just like one enzyme is going to act on one reaction. But again, like your key, you know, you don't use your key and then, oh, it's ruined, we have to get a new one every day. No, you use your key and you can use it over and over and over again, just like an enzyme. Teacher, sorry for the interruption. And we have an interruption. Uh, but just for students, if you plan on turning in a uh, well, homecoming nomination, we'll pause. Homecoming nominations, those Ms. are important. Shannon, or turn it into Miss Shannon's box by 320 today. If you plan on turning in a homecoming nomination, so here's nomination, another graphic. You can see here's the enzyme, there's the substrate, okay, here's the enzyme in green, substrate in purple, the substrate binds, enzyme acts on it, and ta-da, now you have the products, the red and the blue, okay? And there you go, the enzyme, the substance that is changed or acted upon is called the substrate. So here again, just another graphic, just so you guys can see this, there it is, going in. Enzyme's going to act on it, and ta-da, releases the product, okay? So just like your key matches the lock, the active site right there uh, matches the substrate's shape, okay? So that, you know, which one's going to fit? You can see here's just another graphic you can look at. You can pause this and see it, but it shows you again, okay? Um, now, there are some things that can affect an enzyme. So in other words, can harm the enzyme, can change the way the enzyme is going to work. Okay? So the pH level. pH is basically, if you remember from middle school, is the measurement of acidity of a substance. So if the area that the enzyme is in is too acidic or too basic, it's not going to work right. Another thing that can affect the enzyme is temperature. So if it gets too hot or too cold, the enzyme is not going to work as fast as it would at an optimal temperature. And then the amount of substrate. Okay, if there's way too much substrate to act on, the enzyme's gonna slow down. Okay. So if the temperature changes the shape of the enzyme, we call that your denaturing. It's a fancy word for messing up or changing. So you're changing the enzyme, you're changing the shape. So now look, that substrate isn't gonna fit in there. And so the enzyme isn't going to act, uh, isn't going to be able to act on it. So if the temperature is too high or too low, the enzyme doesn't fit, and there won't be a reaction. Okay. Or sometimes it might just slow the reaction down. So pH. Okay. If it gets too acidic, same thing. You're going to denature the enzyme, and it's not going to work. Okay. So look here. Here's another graph. Again, there's lots of these on the test. So. There's the optimum pH for the enzyme. So this enzyme, if you look here, this is how fast the reaction, reaction velocity, how fast it's happening. So right there 
it's happening the fastest, and that would be the optimum pH for that enzyme. Okay, so if the pH is down here, the enzyme goes slower. If the pH is you know too high, it goes slower as well. Okay. Here's another graph you can look at. And again, how fast the enzyme's happening. So, chymotrypsin, what pH is the best? Right about you know 7.2, somewhere right in there, because that's the highest point on the graph for chymotrypsin. Same thing with temperature. Here's another good one. So here's how fast the reaction's happening. Temperature increasing. As the as temperature increases, you can see it's not going to work. It's going to go slower. So there's the optimum temperature there. Okay. So what's the optimum temperature for this enzyme? You can see right there. So again, right about 42, 40, 43 degrees. Substrate concentration, so the more substrate there is, okay, the rate of reaction is going to kind of level off, as you see on this graph. Some more graphs just to practice and look at. Okay. So which one here, the red line, where's the optimum pH? It's going to be right about 7. Okay. Temperature, same thing. And that is all she wrote. So that is it. Hopefully you, and I'll put the PowerPoint on Edmodo as well along with this video. Um, Tuesday, don't forget, meet in the library computer lab. And we will meet in there. We'll talk about enzymes. We'll let you finish the lab. And then you'll start a computer um, web quest about enzymes. Hope you all have a great rest of your weekend. We'll see you Tuesday.